Activity Life Cycle. Hello everyone, just as promised, I want to talk to you about the activity life cycle in this video. Now, at first glance, the activity life cycle is very similar to the application life cycle. Uh, this time, though, we will focus on the activity and not the application. So it's going to be a little different. How does the life cycle work with activity? This life cycle algorithm is also valid for the activity. Now, uh, we have just explained how the life cycle works in the previous video. I don't want to necessarily repeat all of that. I just want to show you in practice in Android Studio. So let's go to Android Studio. Of course, you remember we've got a project that's been cooking and we'll continue with this project. Now, in the last video, we added some log records to see the methods working. And I'm going to add a couple of components on this project to see how the activity lifecycle works. And I'll add to this main activity one text view and two buttons. So now I have three components. I'll organize them to just so that I can, you know, see it comfortably. And I will change the layout height and width of this text view to 50 dp. For the layout height, 50 dp is too big. So I will change it to 30. Also, I will change text of the text view to zero. And also I will change the text size of the text view to 24. And the text color of the text view can be white. And the background color of the text view can be green. And the gravity of the text view yeah, it can be centered. Okay, so now I've done all of this to see the number on the text view comfortably. So now when I click on this button, I want to add to this number plus one. So I will change the text of the button to plus one. Also, I have another button. When I click this button, I want to go to another activity, so I need another activity. Now, how do I create another activity? I click on the app folder, and after that I select File, New Activity, and Empty Activity. Now I need to give it a name. Um, well, let's call it just Second Activity, and click Finish. So now Android Studio will create a second activity for me. And here's the second activity. And here's the main activity. So when I click this button, I want to open the second activity. So I will change the text of this button and I will write, go to the second activity. So now that that's done, I will write Java codes for these components. Now first I will define these components. So I will write text view, text view, and button, button one, and button, button two. I will continue in the onCreate method. Text view equals Find view by ID R dot ID dot text view button one equals find view by ID R dot ID dot button button two equals find view by ID R dot ID dot button two. So 
Now I will add a quick listener to, let's see, button one and button one dot set on click listener, new view on click listener. And also I will add a counter here. So integer counter equals zero. And so every time that I click the number one button, I want the counter to increase. So I'll write counter equals counter plus one. And also it should write this new counter to the text view. Okay, so text view dot set text quotation marks plus counter. Now, if I add quotation marks before the counter, it will change the integer counter to the string. It's a quick and down and dirty quick, but it works. So now it will increase the counter every time I click this button and write it to the text view. Then after that, I will add another click listener to button number two. So button two dot set on click listener, new view on click listener. And when I click this button, it should open the second activity for me. But how's it going to do that? I will use intent for this. That's a topic that I'm going to leave to explain a little bit later, uh, but I just want you to write exactly what I write for now, and we'll talk about its details later. So intent, I equals new intent, and inside the parenthesis, get application context, second activity dot class. After that, start activity I. Now, when I click button two, it will open the second activity for me. So when I go to the between two activities, I want to see which methods work, right? Because of this, I will write the first activity before the word on create. And this will show me the on create method works for the first activity. So I can copy this first activity word and paste it to all of the methods. Okay, so I'm done with the first activity. So when I click this plus one button, it will increase this number on the text view. Also, when I click this button, it will open the second activity. Okay, so now I can pass on to the second activity. And I'll add a button to the second activity. Uh, this button is for going back to the main activity. And I will just bring this button into the center. And let's change the text of the button. So I'll write, um, just go, go to the activity number one. And when I click this button, it should open the first activity. So I need to define this button on the Java side. So I'll write here, button, button, and in the onCreate method, button equals find view by ID r dot id button three and i'll add a click listener to this button button dot set on click listener new view on click listener and then after that i will use the same intent codes for this button intent i equals new intent get application context main activity dot class and start activity i also i need log records for this activity to see which methods work so i'll copy the log records from the main activity and then paste it into the second activity also i will change the first activity and well instead of first activity i'll just write in second activity and I can do the same for the rest.
So that means that after that, the second activity is ready to go. So that means that when I click this button, it should open the main activity. And when I click this button, it will open the second activity. And if I click this button, it will increase the number plus one. Okay, so before I run it, though, I want to open the log records. And after that, I can run the application. All right, so the application's opening. And now you can see when the application was first opened, three methods worked. First activity on create, first activity on start, and first activity on resume. So if I click go to second activity, what's going to happen when I push this button? Okay, so when I clicked the second activity button, the first activity on pause method worked. And then after that, the second activity on create, on start, and on resume methods worked. And after the second activity opened, the first activity on stop method worked. Wow. Okay, so here's where you got to be careful. So I'm going to click go to activity one. And when I click go to activity one button, the second activity on pause method worked. And then after that, the first activity on create on start and on resume methods worked. Okay, so that means the first activity created again. After the first activity opened, the second activity on stop method worked. All right, so do you get why this is so important here? Um, I, I want to show you, because uh, you remember, right, that I put a button here. So when I click this button, it will increase the counter plus one and then write it on the text view. So I'm going to click this button six times. And now it writes six in the text view. So after that, I'll click um, to go to the second activity and it opened the second activity. And after that, I'll go back to the main activity. And when I go back to the main activity, what does the counter say? Counter says zero. So when I go to the second activity, the main activity is closed. When it closed, boom, everything is gone. So when I go back to the main activity, the main activity is created again. Because of this, it deleted everything. It's like we never even saw each other, never even fell in love at first sight, never even began. So what if I want to keep the counter value? I must save it before the activity is closed. That's right. So, so this also happens, by the way, when I rotate the phone. So let me click this button again, and the counter is five. After that, I'll rotate the phone into the landscape position. So when I turn the phone, the first activity um, on pause, that worked on stop and on destroy. Those methods worked. After that, on create, on start, and on resume methods worked for the first activity again. So that means that when I turn the phone, the activity is destroyed and created again. And when I turn the phone, also the counter is reset. So that means before I turn the phone, I need to save the values too. You see how important it is to think ahead. Um, we're going to learn how to save values in some of the later videos, but I just want to show you how important it is. Uh, I think that by now you certainly understand how the activity life cycle works. And for me and for you and for, uh, let me speak for all of us, that's enough for this video. We are going to talk about the fragment life cycle, though, in the next video. Let's make a date. I'll see you in the next video.